Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So we're continuing a discussion that we started last week all about defensive measures used in the Star Wars galaxy. Our last video was about the Ion Cannon and major issues that the Ion Cannon would frequently encounter when employed defensively. Today we'll be expanding that to space stations, especially Golan space stations. And like the Ion Cannon, space stations in Star Wars are useful in some respects, but also come with some serious issues, which can actually be critical if not properly accounted for. So I'm going to structure the video like this. I'll start off by providing some basic lore about space stations, then we're going to look at a history of space stations, how they played into major battles, then I'll end by a full discussion of what I see as some of the main weaknesses. So I'll put timestamps for that down below if you want to skip around. Before we begin though, today's video is sponsored by my Marvel Clips channel. Guys, if you want more Eckhart's Ladder content, I do have a Clips channel specifically for Marvel, like my Star Wars one, but I only want you to check it out if you think you're interested and if you want daily Marvel content. Otherwise, I don't need the number it's not an ego thing i just want to make content you like so if that's interesting link down in the description and there should also be a new video out about now all right so let's get into the lore and i want to make a quick distinction here when we're talking about space stations i'm speaking specifically to defensive stations meant to protect a planet sometimes in star wars you'll see space stations out on their own whether in the middle of nowhere as a secret research base as a trading hub whatever i'm talking specifically about defensive stations used to protect planets. The most famous defensive station was the Golan Line, but there were also the Cardin class defensive stations, the XQ platforms, and many, many other varieties. Again, the Golan is the one we hear the most of and was frequently employed around Imperial worlds. Somewhat surprisingly, the Essential Guide to Warfare doesn't have a section on defense platforms. However, the Last Command Sourcebook gives a very nice overview. I'm going to read a bit just directly. Golan space defense platforms are some of the most remarkable pieces of space hardware in existence. The space gun model is an orbiting combat platform designed for defense duty around smaller outposts such as civilian shipbuilding facilities and colony worlds. It continues saying that the Golan 2 platform is for repelling starfighters and light capital ship starships with 35 turbo laser batteries, proton torpedo launchers, tractor beam emitters, and more, and that the Golan 3 is a much more powerful defense station geared towards military installations and vital civilian facilities. If you want to read the actual stats, feel free to check out the guide or Wikipedia. The footage I'm using is from the Thrawn's Revenge mod, but just as a note, the Golan 3, for example, was very large, 2,600 meters, and even the Golan 2 was significantly more massive than an ISD, despite probably not having quite as much firepower. The original Starships of the Galaxy sourcebook also has some really nice information about Golans. They're again described as one of the most effective planetary defense systems, probably something I'm going to question later, and reinforces that because of their cost, they're placed in orbit around valuable worlds. It says that Golans are the first line of defense for many worlds and are manned by dedicated personnel who know they may be the first casualties in an attack on their planet. It lists the specific advantages of stationary defense stations as a lesser cost and a dedicated presence, i.e. the ship cannot be pulled out of system somewhere else. Is that really an advantage? I don't know. It also reiterates that the general increase in firepower with the creation of the Star Destroyer and later ships necessitated building larger Golans, and notes that the Golan 3 is more powerful, at least arguably, than an Imperial Star Destroyer. With that primer out of the way, let's now talk about some situations where defense platforms, again, mostly Golans, if not all Golans, saw some action. In The Last Command, Book 3 of the Thrawn Trilogy, there are several battles where Golan platforms are utilized. At the Battle of Coruscant, much of the combat takes place around a Golan 3. It's a pretty effective tool, but its lack of mobility is a hindrance. Despite Coruscanti defenses technically outgunning the early Imperial fleet, the Star Destroyers stay out of the kill zone. That is, until Thrawn uses a precise hyperspace jump, brings two victories in to attack the Golan 3, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but does get the green New Republic commander at the time to move around his forces. 
At the Battle of Belbringi, the Empire utilizes Golans to protect the shipyards. And though a line of four Golan 2s is somewhat successful at first, they end up taking so much damage that a pair of assault frigates is able to essentially neutralize one, allowing rebel starfighters to make their way into the shipyards. That doesn't necessarily say a lot on its own, because there's no telling how Imperial ships would have done compared to the stations, but I do think it's worth pointing out that the Golans ended up being the weak point in the Imperial defensive line. And it was really the the New Republic's focus on those stations which helped turn the tide of battle. In the X-Wing novel Wedge's Gamble, the defenses of Coruscant are analyzed and the Golan platforms are identified as the most outer layer. They're also somewhat of a weak spot. They're immobile and isolated, so when one platform is destroyed, you essentially have a safe space to operate in. And that's kind of what happens in the final battle as well. Rogue Squadron manages to take one station out using an orbital mirror, and they're able to then engage the Imperial fleet without facing facing off against the other Golan 3s. During the Yuzhan Vong War, Golans are said to protect key worlds, including Mon Calamari and Coruscant, but we also see lots of situations where people are fleeing the planet and Golan stations are either being pulled down to the planetary surface or just destroyed. So let's do some analysis, and I've got to give credit to the Golans. They definitely do offer a good defensive hard point. You can put your fleet around the Golan, it gives you lots of firepower, they're very sturdy as shown at the Battle of Coruscant, and it's a decent way to deny territory to the enemy fleet. Golans need to be used, however, at the first stage of any good defensive plan. And that's somewhat of a weakness, because that means the Golan is not being aided by a planet's best defensive option, a planetary shield. The Thrawn trilogy acknowledges, and we've talked about in prior videos, how planetary shields are basically impossible to pass. You can eventually beat one down through sustained firepower, but that will take a very long time, and it's much more effective to just wait out the shield, blockade the planet, starve them out, whatever. The problem is, a Golan's outside the planetary shield, so it can't be protected, the shield cannot be extended over the Golan, so if a fleet is going to be conservative, as Thrawn was willing to be at Coruscant, they can pick apart the space stations, and unless you have a mobile response fleet, there's not a whole lot you can do, and an ion cannon Again, at the Battle of Coruscant, we see this is probably not going to be able to effectively protect a Golan because of power drop-offs due to range. And that to me is the real issue. The source books reiterate the fact that Golans are really impressive bits of technology. They can rival, or depending on the model, even outpower a Star Destroyer. They seem to be pretty cost-effective. But is that really worth the benefit of having a space station that's essentially immobile? I don't think so. I think in most cases, the cost of a Golan would be better spent on capital ships. Now, maybe you can't even buy a single Imperial Star Destroyer for the cost of a Golan 3. The Starships of the Galaxy Guide, the original one, is an antiquated source book, but it puts the cost even less than a victory. Even accepting that, I think you want the ships. The immobility just takes away so much. For one, you're going to need Golan surrounding your planet, otherwise enemy fleets will just go somewhere where the space station isn't. That's a similar problem that we talked about when it came to ground to space weapons. If you've got an ion cannon on one continent, attack over another continent. Fleets, on the other hand, can move, they can respond to the enemy, and what's more, if necessary, they can go underneath the planetary shield. They can hold out for the reinforcements or other advantage which may be coming while still conserving their strength. Immobility itself is just also a tactical advantage even when it comes to actually being engaged in battle. We see how the Victory Star Destroyers are able to take advantage of the Golan's immobility. You can focus heavily on one side and the station can't turn to protect itself unless you go by Empire at War. If the weapons on one side are destroyed, for example, you hit that side, whereas a Star Destroyer it can slowly turn, and multiple ships together can also compensate for weak points. We saw at Bill Bringy that the Imperial defensive net around the shipyards partially fell apart because one Golan took so much damage and the array was not able to adjust. Again, at the Battle of
of course, on we also see how range in the Golan's inability to close distance was a major downside. Another big issue is the inability to retreat. Now, this was listed in the Starships of the Galaxy sourcebook as an advantage. You've got a constant defensive presence, but I don't quite see it like that. For one, maybe you have a system-wide defense fleet which can respond quickly to any aggression. This works especially well with a planetary shield which offers you a bit of time. Shield goes up, people hide behind the shield, and hopefully the system defense fleet can get there quick enough to help protect the planet. Now, true, if you're being assaulted on multiple fronts, you're going to be dealing with some troubles, but that's probably true regardless. However, what you're essentially doing with the mobile fleet is multiplying the value of your force. There's also the fact that golems are stuck to the planet, regardless of what happens. That means if worst case scenario needs to happen and you do need to retreat, not only are you leaving behind valuable assets, but you're giving the enemy new defensive protections. Going back to the Thrawn trilogy, this was a major concern for Grand Admiral Thrawn. How can you capture a planet while still keeping all the valuable things like the planetary shield, the ground to space weapons, space defense platforms in a usable shape? Because if you can, not only are you capturing the value of the planet itself, you've got a new strategic stronghold. Again, I'm not saying that Golans have no utility. Their cost and their efficiency and effectiveness is worth noting and probably is one option for small planets. Something like a golden one sitting in a gravity well but otherwise i think space stations generally can be replaced in other more flexible ways and i think that's why in star wars of those space stations are seen and referenced a lot they don't often play into pivotal moments that's not without exception though Going back to the X-Wing series, the Empress class station that Wraith Squadron uses essentially helps them capture a Super Star Destroyer. That station was also one sitting outside a planet as well, Yog Duel specifically. Of course, there are other things like the Death Star is technically a space station. According to the Starship of the Galaxy Guide, even the Executor is large enough to be classified as a space station. But those are just my, I was going to say quick, but not that quick. Those are just my thoughts on the topic. Let me know what you think down below and if there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Till next time, guys, please be safe. Have a good one and may the force be with you.